Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 245 and today is our lesson number 154. Question number 19. The penultimate question, the second to the last question. Penultimate was the word that I just used. It's spelled P-E-N and then ultimate, but it's not pronounced pen ultimate, it's pronounced penultimate, which just means second to the last. Problem number 19 is what we are about to do, the penultimate question on page number 245. If you want to learn this word properly along with some other useful words for the GRE, you must have a decent vocabulary if you have any hope at all of getting a decent score in the verbal part of the GRE. Good vocabulary is a must. If you want to improve your vocabulary with me, go to my channel and watch the vocabulary videos. Just type in my name, Kishwani, and then vocabulary, and then whichever day that that is uh, that that you that you want to watch. For example, the for example, the word penultimate that I just used. I know we covered it. I know we learned it. I know that for a fact. And the reason I know that for a fact is because I use it all the time, which is why I covered them in my covered it in my video. Penultimate. Day number 11. Just type in Keshwani, my name, and then vocabulary, day 11, and you will learn this word along with some other useful word. So this is the penultimate question on page 245. It deals with the concept of parabola. We are given the equation of the parabola. The very first thing it asks us to do is find the x-intercept. x-intercept is where the parabola cuts the x-axis, which is why it's called x-intercept. It looks something like this. Well, whatever your parabola looks like, it's going to cut the x-axis somewhere here and here. And at those points, y equals, now I drew it very symmetric. I have no idea how the parabola is going to actually sit here. The way I drew it, the line of symmetry is the y-axis. This is the line of symmetry because it's symmetric to y-axis. This is called the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry. And of course, once we once we make progress on it, and once we figure out what the x coordinates are, what what, what the x intercepts are, we will we will be able to better tell whether or not we were correct in our assumptions. Let's find out. So at that point, the y is zero. So we're going to set this equal to zero, and we're going to solve this as a simple as a simple quadratic equation. That's exactly what it is. It's a quadratic equation. There are two ways we can go about it. One way we can solve the quad solve a quadratic equation is by using the quadratic formula. Another way is to use a method called factorization. Sometimes quadratic formula does not work. There are sometimes the nature of the problem is such that you have no choice but to use factorization because they're asking something about the factors. Uh, in that case, you have to learn the method of factorization. Right here you will find the list of the days that I, that I spend dealing with this topic. Day number 99 through 103, the five days, 99, 100, 101, 103. Day 124, 129, 141, and 142. We have spent nine days on the concept of factorization. We're going to spend one more this day just now. This is how it goes. Here, we are looking for two numbers whose product is the coefficient of this guy, which is positive 1, times this guy, negative 12. And whose sum equals the coefficient of the middle guy, which is negative 4. Right now I'm doing it in a hurry and in a rush because it's already been covered here. Right now, the point of the problem is not to do the factorization. The point of the problem is to actually solve this problem, which, as it is, is very long. So can you think of two numbers which, when multiplied by, which, when multiplied together, gives us negative 12, and when we add them, we get a negative 4? Well, the multiplied part is very simple. 
Can you think of two numbers which when multiplied together give us negative 12, which is right here. Positive 1 and negative 12 gives us negative 12. Positive 1, positive 1, which is the coefficient of x squared, and negative 12, of course, will give us a product of negative 12. But the problem is when you add them up, positive 1 and negative 12, they do not add up to negative 4. That's why we can't use them. So let's break 12 in some other form. But there are only two possibilities you can break the 12 into other forms, which is it is either four, 6 times 2 or 4 times 3. That gives us 12, but this gives us 12. Here, no matter what you do here, if you make negative, if you make a negative 4 and a positive 3, the sum is going to be negative 1, we need a negative 4. Or if you do positive 4 and a negative 3, you're going to, you're going to get a sum of positive 1. This, is just, this should say sum you're going to get a sum of positive 1. We need a sum of negative 4. So we have to work with this guy here. And since we need a sum of negative 4, let's try negative, negative 6 and a positive 2. Voila. A negative 6 and a positive 2 will give us a sum of negative 4. Those are our factors. Negative 6 and positive 2. We're going to have to put them in here. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this part here. We are done with it. Negative 6 and positive 2. x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0, x, which implies that x squared minus 6x plus 2x minus 12 equals 0. Because as you can see, negative 6x and positive 2x gives us a negative 4x. And negative 6x times positive 2x is going to give us negative 12x squared, which is what we get here. Negative 12x squared is the product of these two terms. This constant term and this term is what you have here. Now, do you find anything common between these two terms, this term and this term? Do we find anything common? The common factor is x. Take out x. What about these two terms? Do you find anything common here? A positive 2x and a negative 12? You get a common factor of 2. And that equals 0. Now, we look at this term right here, this part and this part. Anything common in these two parts? The part that is common is x minus 6. As you can tell, I'm going a little bit fast because as I told you before, we already spent 9 days on that topic. Okay? So x minus 6 is out and then we left with x plus 2. And that has to equal to 0. And if the product of two quantities is equal to 0, then one of those two quantities is equal to 0 or they are both equal to 0, which implies, which implies that either x minus 6 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. If x minus 6 is equal to 0, then x must be 6. Or, if x plus 2 is equal to 0, then x, minus, x must be negative 2. There you go. Those are the roots. Those are the roots of the equation. I'm going to quickly, I'm going to take one second to actually verify our answer before I go any further. We're going to verify it on the top here. So our equation is x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. x squared is going to be 36. If I put in 6 in here, it's going to give us 36 minus 4 times 6 is going to be 24 minus 12. As you can see, negative 24 and a negative 12 give us negative 36. Negative 36 and a positive 36 does equal 12. It does work. Let's put in the second value, see if it works. Negative 2. Negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 12. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. And negative 4 and negative 2 is going to be positive 8. Positive 4 and a positive 8 is positive 12. And 12 is 0. But that also works. These are correct, correct, correct values. So now we know what our, what our parabola is going to cut the x-axis. It's going to cut the x-axis at 6 and a negative 2. It does not set symmetric to the y-axis. I'm going to have to redraw it. And once we draw it, draw it again, then we'll figure out the line of symmetry. I'm going to erase all of this thing. I think you have, you have it there now. I'm going to erase this thing, or we can draw it here, actually. Positive 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it cuts it here, and negative 2, 1, 2, it cuts it here. I'm going to do it freehand. I'm going to draw it freehand as best as I can. And you see from negative 2 to positive 6, from negative 2 to positive 6 is 8 units, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, right here at positive 2 is the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is here. This is what the parabola is going to call. This, this is not going very parallel, is it? That's because my y-axis is not going straight. Oh, no. That is what our parabola looks like. And this is what is known as the vertex. I'm going to call it point V for vertex. Let's call this middle point as the M. And this is the line of symmetry. Line of symmetry is where x equals 2. I don't know what we are, why I'm doing all this thing. What exactly are they asking? We are looking for the x-intercept. We just found the x-intercept, negative 2 and a positive 6. The x-intercepts are negative 2 and positive 6. In the second part, they are looking for y-intercept. So let's write, read out the equation of the parabola, which is x squared minus 4x minus 12. And the x-intercept is going to be right here. They're looking for this point right here, x-intercept, the point where the parabola cuts, sorry, the y-intercept, part b is what we're doing, the x-intercept we already found, negative 2 and positive 6. The y-intercept is where the parabola is going to cut the y-axis, we're trying to locate this point, the coordinates of this point. We already know the x-coordinate of this point is 0, we're going to find out the y-coordinate. So x is 0 at this point, plug in 0 in here, we'll find, oh that's right, y is equal to 12, that's it. 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 12, which means y is equal to negative 12, which means the coordinate of this one are 0 and negative 12. Voilà. So that takes care of the second part. Finally, in part C, they are asking for the coordinates of the vertex, coordinate of this guy, point V. Let's do it here. Now, what we have to understand is that the x coordinate, x coordinate of the vertex, is the same as the x coordinate of this point, the middle point, which is what I'm calling M. The x coordinate of vertex, our point V, is same as the x coordinate of point M. Now the question is how do you find the x coordinate of point M? We already did that. x coordinate of point M is simply the average of these two numbers. Negative 2, negative 2 and a positive 6. We divide it by 2, find their average. Negative 2 plus positive 6 is positive 4 and positive 4 divided by 2 is positive 2 which is right here I showed you. You see? Because point positive 2 here is 4 units from negative 2 and positive 2 is 4 units from positive 6. Let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, obviously. So we already know the x coordinate of this point. x coordinate of this point is 2 and y coordinate is 0, which means the x coordinate of this guy is positive 2. We just have to find the y coordinate, which is very straightforward. Since we know the equation, since we know the equation, y equals x squared minus 4x minus 12. Since we know the equation of the line, we plug in the values of the x and we can figure out the y coordinate. So x is equal to 0, sorry, x is equal to positive 2. 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 12. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So we end up with 4 minus 8 minus 12. 
a minus 8 and a minus 12 is minus 20, a negative 20 and a positive 4 is going to give us negative 16. Voila. So that's, those were the coordinates here. The vertex is sitting at positive 2 and negative 16. And this guy was sitting at negative 12. So this is 4 units lower. That's it. That's what our parabola looks like. That's it. We're done. That is what they're asking. That's, that's what they were asking in 19. Uh, there was quite a bit there. I will see you tomorrow where we'll solve the last problem on this page. The one dealing with circle. The one dealing with circle. And if you are interested, I can give you... Well, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.